So right here, I'm going to start with putting WD-40 so that there will be less friction. Next, I'm gonna lock the poppet in place by hammering the wedge in. Now, I'm just trying to get it centered and trying to get it to spin freely. And I haven't found the wing nut yet for, so far. Now, I'm using a wrench for the tool rest. And now that I found what I want, I attach the rope to it. I'm gonna adjust my tool rest now. With my new roughing gouge, I'm going to turn the first half of the blank into a spindle. So while you're watching me making this, you're gonna see me try a lot of different tool handlings, a lot of different positions, and and I just keep switching foot so that they won't get tired. I use my right leg and then left leg. And over the video, you're going to see me retighten it because since the other side is just a thin piece of scrap nail for temporary purposes, just so that I could try it out. Then it somehow drills itself in, so I need to retighten it every time. But my lathe, well, it's called the lathe tail stock. I forgot what it's called, but like it's gonna come soon and I can put it in. Next, we will use a skew chisel to flatten it out. Well, this isn't exactly a skew chisel. It's just a bench chisel. But, yeah, you, you're gonna use the skew chisel. And here, just a change of angle. I'm now going to start roughing out the other side. This wood is kinda taking a little long to rough out because it's a weird piece of scrap wood. Instead of the standard 2x2 two two, which is 1.5 by 1.5 inch, it's 1.5 inch by 1 and 3 fourths inch. So it's actually rectangular. But just to make things faster, I just used a plane and planed off all the edges to make it an octagon. Just so that it will take faster and it's not too rough on the lathe and on the tools. And here I am again with the flat chisel, just smoothing everything out. Also, you might be hesitant to make this lathe, but it does look tiring, but with all honesty, it's just hot there. Like, my legs aren't really that tired because if I switch legs and I also sometimes just use my body weight. But there are other types of DIY lathes that you can make. You can try to search also in YouTube or online. Some of them using old motors. Some of them as simple as hooking it up into an electric drill, the corded ones. So right now, you can see me making a taper. Mm, just, just practice if I want to make a table leg that's tapered or a chair leg that's tapered, I can do it. Right now, I'm going to be making a bead, and I've experimented with this. First, I tried to use the natural round shape of my roughing gouge. But 
but that didn't turn out that well so I tried to use the flat chisel and turn it on its side just like you would with a skew chisel and then just sweep it and that turned out a lot better and I liked it more so that's exactly what I did here I just came back at it and did that So right now, I'm going to be making a cove. I think that's what it's called. And I've just made some pencil marks. And I'm just going to be chiseling it out. Also, I forgot to tell you, but like, do you see that random piece of wood over there? And if you viewed my Instagram, it's also there. It's because I can't find the tree branch nor something that I can put on top of there. So, I'm actually using a bungee cord, which actually it works really well. I might not even ever need to change it. But... Let's see in the future if I will still continue with the branch idea thing. And here, just watch me do other things here. This is just footage of me using it. I didn't, didn't really edit this video that much so you can see how it works. All I did was just compiled the, compiled the videos and sped them up. This lathe is really fun to use, actually. And the way it shakes, the workpiece doesn't really shake. And if it does, it's bad because it's not going to be even. But it's my shop floor that's not even. And I know that because nothing I put in my workshop stays stable. Including my two workbenches, my other workbench, the shelves... They don't wobble, they all just shake around on the floor because it's just so uneven. Okay, now I'm happy with the shape that I want. I'm going to start sanding and I like to sand with the tool rest out and I used just the one the random orbital sander 120 grit because i didn't have 120 grit paper so i just used the random orbital sander discs and if you want to get in those indents let's call them because like can't call it a bead because i'm actually sanding the bead but the two sides of it you can angle it and that will sand them Now I'm just going to be doing the other side. And if you don't have sharp tools and you're a noob at doing this, yes, there's going to be a lot of roughness and sanding will take quite a while. But it's actually kind of worth it because it really makes it a lot smoother than if you don't sand it. Also, when you're actually gonna make something here, they usually mark lines or use the parting tool to part away the ends because there's going to be visible holes. So, what I'm going to do is use the wood chips and the wood shavings and the sawdust to 
burnish the wood. It's like natural sandpaper. So, right here I am giving it a wax finish. You know, just spinning it around and using a paper towel to apply it. There are a lot of types of finishes that you can apply like this. But this time I'm using wax. Forgot what type of wax this is. But it's a type of wax. I used to use bee wax on this. Bees wax. But then I ran out of it. So I'm using this type of wax. And... It, it also looks well. It looks nice, actually. Boiled linseed oil is also a popular wood finish, so you can try that too. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Bye!